January 5th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Genesis chapters 9 and 10 from the Old Testament. Then God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Every living creature of the earth and every bird of the sky will be terrified of you. Everything that creeps on the ground and all the fish of the sea are under your authority. You may eat any moving thing that lives. As I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. But you must not eat meat with its life, that is, its blood, in it. For your lifeblood I will surely exact punishment. From every living creature I will exact punishment. From each person I will exact punishment for the life of the individual, since the man was his relative. Whoever sheds human blood by other humans, must his blood be shed, for in God's image God has made humankind. But as for you, be fruitful and multiply. Increase abundantly on the earth and multiply on it. God said to Noah and his sons, Look, I now confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, including the birds, the domestic animals, and every living creature of the earth with you, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature of the earth. I confirm my covenant with you. Never again will all living things be wiped out by the waters of a flood. Never again will a flood destroy the earth. And God said, This is the guarantee of the covenant I am making with you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all subsequent generations. I will place my rainbow in the clouds, and it will become a guarantee of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, then I will remember my covenant with you and with all living creatures of all kinds. Never again will the waters become a flood and destroy all living things. When the rainbow is in the clouds, I will notice it and remember the perpetual covenant between God and all living creatures of all kinds that are on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the guarantee of the covenant that I am confirming between me and all living things that are on the earth. The sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now Ham was the father of Canaan. These were the sons of Noah, and from them the whole earth was populated. Noah, a man of the soil, began to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of the wine, he got drunk and uncovered himself inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father's nakedness and told his two brothers who were outside. Shem and Japheth took the garment and placed it on their shoulders. Then they walked in backwards and covered up their father's nakedness. Their faces were turned the other way, so they did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his drunken stupor, he learned what his youngest son had done to him. So he said, Cursed be Canaan! The lowest of slaves he will be to his brothers. He also said, Worthy of praise is the Lord, the God of Shem. May Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God enlarge Japheth's territory and numbers. May he live in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his slave. After the flood, Noah lived 350 years. The entire lifetime of Noah was 950 years, and then he died. This is the account of Noah's sons Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Sons were born to them after the flood. The sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tyrus. The sons of Gomer were Ashkenaz, Riphath, and Togermah. The sons of Javan were Elisha, Tarshish, the Kittim, and the Dodanim. From these the coastlands of the nations were separated into their lands, every one according to its language, according to their families, by their nations. The sons of Ham were Cush, Mizraim, Put, 
and Canaan. The sons of Cush were Seba, Havilah, Sabta, Rehamah, and Sabtika. The sons of Rehamah were Sheba and Dedan. Cush was the father of Nimrod. He began to be a valiant warrior on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. The primary regions of his kingdom were Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalna in the land of Shinar. From that land he went to Assyria, where he built Nineveh, Rehoboth, Ir, Kala, and Rezin, which is between Nineveh and the great city Kala. Mizraim was the father of the Ludites, Anamites, Lahabites, Naphtahites, Pathrusites, Kasluhites, from whom the Philistines came, and Kaphorites. Canaan was the father of Sidon, his firstborn Heth, the Jebusites, Amorites, Girgashites, Hivites, Archites, Sinites, Arvidites, Zemurites, and Hamathites. Eventually the families of the Canaanites were scattered, and the borders of Canaan extended from Sidon all the way to Gerar, as far as Gaza, and all the way to Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim, as far as Lasha. These are the sons of Ham, according to their families, according to their languages, by their lands, and by their nations. And sons were also born to Shem, the older brother of Japheth, the father of all the sons of Eber. The sons of Shem were Elam, Asher, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram. The sons of Aram were Uz, Hull, Gether, and Mash. Arphaxad was the father of Shelah, and Shelah was the father of Eber. Two sons were born to Eber. One was named Peleg, because in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Jachtan. Jachtan was the father of Almodad, Shelef, Hazarmatheth, Gerar, Hadoram, Uzal, Dikla, Obal, Abimiel, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. All of these were sons of Jachtan. Their dwelling place was from Misha all the way to Sephar in the eastern hills. These are the sons of Shem according to their families, according to their languages, by their lands, and according to their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah according to their genealogies, by their nations, and from these the nations spread over the earth after the flood. God, thank you so much for your word today. You know, sometimes we we read or we listen to chapters like this and we wonder how something that happened so long ago and is somebody else's family genealogy applies to us. But it does apply to us because we are all part of your family. And remembering where we came from, from a man named Noah who found favor in your sight to save him and his family that we were uniquely created in your image and for your glory. The passages like this are important, that we are all one part of a huge family, the family of your children, God. And for that, I thank you. I thank you for taking the time to make each one of us unique, with unique traits and unique features and unique gifts, and figuring out how they all fit together in your kingdom and how they all were made to glorify you. God, I know there's people listening to this today who, who don't 
have confidence in themselves or who let other people take away their confidence. They don't believe that they're beautiful or smart or can do anything in your kingdom. God, be with them today. Remind them of the incredible gifts that you have given each of us. You made us. The world didn't make us. You did. Our weaknesses, God, come from what the world says about us. Our strength and confidence comes from you, God. And so I just ask for strength and confidence for everyone listening today to go out into the world, be the light we talked about, and shine for you. Be confident in who they are, not what the world says that they are, but who they are and who you made them to be in this amazing world. And how we fit in with the Admas and the Oozles and the Diklas and how we fit into this amazing family of yours and how blessed we are to be your children. God, we just love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>